Okay, oh, boobies. <clears throat> yes, I think this is great. I want to start this video by saying it's okay to buy things as long as they make you happy. After all, there are many people on this planet and people have different interests, different needs, and different priorities of things that they want to buy. So this is just my perspective and things I personally choose not to prioritize and spend my hard-earned money on. Minimalism is about owning less, yes, but it's also about consuming less and consuming more mindfully. So hopefully this list will help you prioritize the things to buy and things not to buy. Number one, purposeless decor. That is, things you can find at Target, Ross, Home Goods, you know, mass produced decor that's just, you know, for the sake of decorating your space. But my decor has to have purpose. And at least one of these three things it has to be either a memento, it has to be art, local art, purpose, meaningful art and functional. An example of this would be like a puzzle or a book, a record, if you like music, your favorite art piece in a picture frame. You know, I think they're conversation starters and they also add this element of hominess and coziness than that, you know, piece of plastic manufactured thing. Then, you know, again, if you like these little knickknacks that you can buy, that's totally okay. But again, I choose not to spend money on that because I'd rather decorate my space with intentionality and things that bring me joy. Number two, clothing that isn't comfortable. And I've been there. I know a lot of us have probably been there. You buy a pair of jeans or a leather jacket, just something that everyone is wearing. It looks good on everyone. Everybody needs it. It's like a stable piece, but it just doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't look right. I have zero tolerance for that. My jeans need to fit me nicely and precisely all day long. I need to sit, squat, bend, dance. Okay, if I can't do those things, then I am not spending my money on it. I have been on the hunt for the perfect pair of jeans and coronavirus. So. But I finally found them and it is all the more rewarding rather than having 10 pairs of jeans that I feel okay about. Don't settle for bad clothing. The third thing that I don't buy, spend my money on, is unnecessary beauty products. I have a simple and consistent skincare routine because I have really sensitive, acne-prone skin. Really, the only three-step skincare routine you need is cleanse, moisturize, and treat. In the morning, that's cleansing with water, moisturizing, and then putting on sunscreen. In the evening, that's cleansing, moisturizing, and exfoliating, whether that's with a chemical exfoliant or a physical exfoliant, it's up to you. But I think these three products is all you need and will take you very far. There's no need for fancy oils and serums, hydro whatever's, masks, all this stuff that's gonna promise great results, and maybe they do, but it's just excessive. Less is more in this case, truly. The fourth thing I don't buy is makeup and nail polish. So it's not to say I don't wear makeup and I don't appreciate touching myself up. Touching myself up? Is that what I'm trying to say? I don't know. I appreciate looking extra good every once in a while, but I don't wear makeup enough to justify spending a lot of money on it. There are three products that I need. I got the eyebrow stuff, the eyelash stuff, and I got the lip stuff. I have two lip colors, one natural lip color to enhance and red for those days when I'm feeling spicy. I don't have any fancy face stuff like blush, highlight, eyeshadow, lip liner, you know, things that make your nose look smaller. None of that because it's just so much work. And I know it's fun for a lot of people, but for me personally, I just, I just don't need it. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm fine. I'm not wearing any makeup right now. And most of the time I feel okay in my own skin, you know?
<clears throat> and when it comes to nail polish, I get my nails done like once in a blue moon and it's nice to support local business, pay for that service in that case, which I know is impractical for people who like to get their nails done all the time. But for someone like me who, again, I get my nails done like once every few months maybe, then it's worth it to me to support a small business and just pay for that service rather than have a collection of nail polish that I only wear you know number cinco hairstyling tools and you can probably tell <laughs> because my hair is just has a mind of its own and i let it do whatever it wants but i don't own a blow dryer a hair straightener a curling iron none of that because i just don't do my hair i again let it run free this isn't practical for everyone i know but a tip i have is to style your hair when it's wet if you're trying to get curls or beach waves or just like smoother texture you know styling your hair when it's wet because it does the same thing just not with as much damage and it's less expensive you might not get the results you want, but again, in that case, support local business, which is what I do if I really need a fancy smancy hairstyle, like an updo or something, but I'm a simple woman, so I don't really get my hair done or cut that often. When I do, I like to support my local hairdresser. The sixth thing I don't buy, single-use kitchenware, or as Alton Brown calls them, unitaskers. These are things that have one purpose and one purpose only, and they just take up a bunch of space, and they're just not that useful, <laughs> in my opinion. I like to have minimum equipment with maximum results, and this goes with most things in life. I like to buy things that can be used for multiple occasions. Saves you space, saves you money, Need I say more? Number seven is Tupperware. There is no need for fancy glass Tupperware. Just use the plastic containers that you already have from takeout, from deli containers, pasta sauce jars, things that you already have in your home that all it takes is a quick rinse and you can use it for any of your leftovers. You know, glass Tupperware is just one of those fancy things that rich people like to flex on. Like, hmm, Martha, I have the most latest and greatest glass Tupperware. It's called the fucking, I don't know. I don't keep up with this, so I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is use what you have, be resourceful, and you don't need to spend money on upgrades. Bonus thing I don't buy, upgrades like the latest and greatest iPhone or phone accessory. Practice just being content with what you have for once in your life, okay? Number eight is media. DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs, books, video games. These are all things that you can digitize. And I know just a few years ago we weren't able to, but with all of the streaming services that we have and the, you know, not so legal <laughs> streaming services that we have, there is no need to buy hard copies of things unless you are a collector and you really get enjoyment out of this. A lot of times these things like DVDs, Blu-rays, books cost a lot of money but have almost no resale value, so it's not worth it. For video games, sometimes I can see where you might buy something and then regret it later. Then you can try to sell it or get your money back, not as much as what you paid for but still something. In that case, if you buy a video game digitally then you can't really resell that. Number nine is cheap clothing and accessories. And I know it's not the most convenient thing, it's not the most affordable thing, but there are so many ways now especially where you can get quality clothing for a cheaper price point. Going to a local thrift store or online secondhand shopping, there are so many different websites like Poshmark and Depop, ThreadUp, The Real Real if you're into luxury things at half the price. It's so much better than supporting fast fashion and contributing to this endless cycle of exploitative labor and just cheap clothing that's really not going to last you a long time but because it's so cheap and so disposable you end up having so much excess and 10 years from now you're just gonna open your closet and just damn like you know do you want to wake up in 10 years to an overwhelming closet i don't think so i would personally rather buy one 100 dollar necklace than 10 necklaces for a hundred dollars having one nice solid piece that lasts me a long time i'm gonna appreciate it more than the 10 cheapo necklaces make your life simpler and save your monies the last thing is stationary and that's anything 
stationery, calendars, notebooks, journals, cute sticky notes, what have you. We live in a digital world. It's so much easier and simpler to document your life <laughs> and organize your life on something like Google Calendar or, you know, all the different apps that there are available nowadays. Personally, I, yeah, I just don't like having the clutter. If you buy stationery, then you need to buy writing utensils. And if you need to buy writing utensils, then you need to buy things to erase with writing utensils. It's like you're buying something that requires you to buy something else for that other thing. And it's just so much that you probably don't need. And again, this is all personal preference, but yes, that is my list of 10 things. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you go into 2021 a more mindful consumer. Have a nice day. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>